is the Gridiron Guys podcast with Anthony Stalter and Super Bowl champion Kerry Davis. Driven by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. And welcome back to the Gridiron Guys. I'm Anthony Stalter. Alongside me is uh, my guy, Kerry Davis, Super Bowl champion with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Kerry, I'm just going to let people behind the, the scenes here for a second. We haven't done a podcast in maybe a month or so. Yeah, it's my fault. It's not your fault. No, it's my fault. You're I, coaching. I, I, it, therefore, it's my fault. I've been All right, working. it's your fault. Yeah. I, I mean, I yeah, I don't have, I barely have time to think. And I, 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 I go from one place to the next on autopilot. Sometimes my car just goes where it needs to go, <laughs> and I'm not even driving. I'm just there. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's been my fault. Yeah. I, I've been working, and as I have been preparing, this is our offseason, so we get 20 practices in the offseason. I coach high school football at Hazelwood Central here in St. Louis. And so uh, we get 20 practices in the offseason in the summertime. So we've been practicing. I leave from here after our show, 7 to 10, and our practice starts at 11. My uh, assistant coaches get it started, and then I show up around 11, 15, and we're right into it. So I don't have much time. And then by the time we're done at 2, what are you doing, Ant? I'm on air. So, right, yeah. so, yeah, we don't have any So it's time. my fault, too. It's my fault, too. <laughs> so yeah, for those who don't know, and Kerry, Kerry does the, the morning show here in St. Louis for 101 ESPN. So he he's on from 7 to 10 or sometimes yep. 7 to 11. Yep. Uh, and then, then he heads over to practice. So we're, we're going to try to get – into a groove but you know carrie's got his we'll summer around. schedule yeah, yeah so we'll we'll figure, we'll, we'll figure it out but this is the behind the scenes so carrie and i are walking in and i look at carrie go what are we going to talk about and <laughs> Kerry looked at me, he's like i was going to ask you then we remembered that we were doing the division by yes. division look so we yes. had talked about the afc and the nfc south and then we talked about the AFC and NFC North division. Mm-hmm. And today we're going to do the NFC and the AFC East division. Correct. And, Kerry, I think we're going to start off with the NFC East. And we'll weave in storylines, too, because I know DeAndre Hopkins has yet to sign. I know that Tyreek Hill had another off-field incident. So some of those things will actually play into what we're talking about in the division. So Without further ado, Kerry, let's just jump right into it. Let's talk about the AFC East. And the team that stole all the headlines this offseason, of course, was the New York Jets. They yeah. uh, they acquire Aaron Rodgers in the offseason. That was obviously the big move they made. Then they seemingly made moves to make sure that they surrounded him with the talent that he wanted, i.e. Alan Lazard. They also signed McCall Hardman. I don't know what they're going to do with Corey Davis. I imagine at some point they're going to release him, although I'm a little surprised they haven't already. They had, a, I think, a pretty good draft. We were talking about beforehand. They acquired Chuck Clark, the safety from Baltimore, in a trade. The defense is loaded for Bear. We'll see if Brees Hall, who probably would have won AFC Rookie of the Year, that went to his teammate instead. That, mm-hmm. that went to, of course, Garrett Wilson. Yep. But Kerry... When it comes to the Jets, and we were, I believe we were doing win totals, and we we're looking at that. So the Jets, let me give you the win total. You tell me if you like if you like the over, the under. It's at nine and a half. So nine and a half is the win total. If you like the over, they got to win at least ten games. Whoa. You see ten wins for the Jets this year. You know, with the additions, I think they were a team last year, really a quarterback away. You had Mike White. You had you had those guys, uh, uh, Zach Wilson. Those guys were in the quarterback position, but not really the leaders of that team you had kind of a uh I, we've been using the word kerfuffle in in the <laughs> opening drive with Zach Wilson and and the starting quarterback role so they they a lot of those guys wanted to go with Mike White so that's a position that they were in need of and they went out and got t- got that taken care of when you go and get the quarterback that they got in Aaron Rodgers and yeah. so now you're looking at an organization with an adult at the leadership position behind the wheel, really controlling that offense in the manner in which they needed to be. I think nine and a half win nine and a half wins is is doable. I think ten is doable for this team this year. And and as you said, they got rookie of the year on offense. Could have had two of them. You got rookie of the year on defense. You go out and do pretty well in the draft as you spoke about. I'm excited for what this Jets team and I know the fanfare has been high. Aaron Rodgers is a is a 
spectacular Hall of Fame quarterback, which is the one position that they needed most and they got it taken care of. For me, Kerry, I think a lot of people would side with you and take and take the over. I think they're going to fall just short. One, the schedule is is more daunting now for Aaron Rodgers than it has been in the NFC North. And I know it's not just about Aaron Rodgers, yeah. but when you think about how he owned the Bears, I mean, there were, that was two free wins every year for Aaron Rodgers against the Bears. Him. He did. He, he said, him. I own you. When he retires, I think he's literally he, he, going to take... He might have ownership, yeah, a take, stake in the, in the, <laughs> in the franchise. <laughs> he's going to have some portion of it but you don't have the lions two times a year and i know the lions are better now but i'm talking yeah. about throughout the course of the of, of aaron Rodgers' career so the lions aren't there the bears aren't there the vikings at, at worst it's, it was a split i think a lot of times with minnesota so he goes over in, into a division where buffalo i and we'll get to buffalo but i think buffalo is still is still rock solid mm-hmm. people are down on them because they got shredded by cincinnati in the yeah. playoffs okay they're still a playoff contender right. they still might even be a super bowl contender the the patriots they don't have the they don't have the personnel, but they still have. And I know everybody's dogging on Bill Belichick. When you when you start to fall on when you start to fall asleep on Belichick, you know that all of a sudden he he reminds everybody of why he's he's going to be a Hall of Famer at one point. And then you have the Dolphins who are are vastly improved. I think that with Rodgers, his play last year, I think it dipped. I think we blame everybody else for that. Mm-hmm. But he's terrible in the red zone. Prime opportunity to go to the playoffs last year home game essentially a home game in the playoffs against an eliminated Detroit Lions team and they scored like 20 some odd points I I wonder if Rodgers is going to see that that steep drop off despite all of the 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 fanfare and all that going on in New York and and I get why the I get it from the Jets standpoint I do but I think that when it when it comes to the actual football games here Aaron Rodgers has got a lot to prove himself based on his performance last year so I I think I think Aaron Rodgers takes a lot of heat because of some of his antics off the field, the ayahuasca and the dark room and the spending four days in the darkness. Like yeah. that—that that is weird. He's not a guy you get a beer with. It's it's kind of strange to people. But when you're talking about just football, and you know we are we're football guys. I, I, I give me a guy. I don't give a damn what you do on your off time. Just win. Just go win the game, man. Yep. And if I'm looking at a guy in Aaron Rodgers, I go back to to his young core of receivers. It took them. Man, making that transition from college to the NFL is hard for for players. And and so it took those guys a while to really get on the same page. I remember, if I'm not mistaken, the first pass that he threw, I think it was to Christian Watkins, which would have been a touchdown for the first play of the year. It's a drop. Devontae Adams makes that catch and they score. So Mm -hmm. there was a transition period for those younger guys to really get a hold of what they were and how they were. So I don't blame Aaron Rodgers solely for what took place last year. Oh, I don't either. And, yeah. and when you look at that final game, I mean, yeah, they, they should have beaten the Lions. That's a that's a game, divisional rival, to go to the playoffs. You didn't take care of your business. That's on you. But I think the version that you're going to get of Aaron Rodgers is going to be spectacular this year. You know, new place, new environment, new city, opportunity to show the rest of the world what he's been showing in Green Bay for 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 years, so I'm really excited about what his his potential is in New York. Well, it's it's off to a great start. The off season, he has been. I mean, part of the reason why the he it took so long for him to get on the same page with his receivers is he didn't spend any time yeah. in the off season with them. Yeah. But that's been a different story this year. Definitely. He's been he's been involved with the Jets. The off season has gone well, and I understand the hype behind him, which is why Kerry's got the over nine and a half wins for the the Jets. I've got the under nine and a half. I think they fall just short. I think they're a nine win team this year. Who do you want to go to next? Dealer's choice. You got the Dolphins. You got the Bills. Let's go Buffalo. You got the Patriots. All right. We brought up Buffalo before. Buffalo Buffalo has a win total heading into this year. And we're using win totals just as a a, a way to kind of talk about the team as a whole. Mm -hmm. Over is 10 and a half. I think they get over that. I think this Buffalo team was dominated by Cincinnati because Buffalo, the, the Bills are, and I've mentioned this before, the Bills, the Bills have been built like a dome team carry that Mm -hmm. plays outdoors. Yeah. If you know it, like September, great. When, warm weather, great. They get a bad opponent at home, no problem. But a, a physical Cincinnati team went into Buffalo and took it to them. 
They took the fight to him. And I know we're talking you know, Stefan Diggs and all that. I loved what, what I loved that Stefan Diggs was pissed. Yeah. This team should have been better than it was a year ago. This team probably should have had a Super Bowl appearance at some point and taking nothing away from Kansas City. But when you look at this Bills roster, it is still loaded for bear. You've got Stefan Diggs on the outside. I think Gabe Davis is a is, is a fine number two receiver. I know there was a lot of talk of, well, who's going to be the possession guy? Maybe it's Trent Shearfield who they uh, signed from Miami. Maybe Khalil Shakir takes another another step. I know they drafted shorter in the fifth round this year. But I like the O-line. The The running game took, took flight with James Cook last year. He's got definitely more explosiveness than uh, Devin Singletary. Yes. And – they added another pass rusher to go along with to go along with Von Miller when they signed uh, the former uh, Floyd, former Ram, yeah. former Bear, uh, Floyd. So I, I think that when you look at this this Buffalo team, I still think that they're good to go. I still think that they win at least eleven games, and as of right now, I still got them winning the division. What is their over under? I, I think I missed it. Ten and a half. Ten and a half. Leonard Floyd. I couldn't remember his, name, Floyd, his first yeah. name. Leonard um, Floyd. Who I think th- this division is is intriguing to me because you could really have three of the four teams make the playoffs. And and in the AFC, we've talked about the quarterback play, how important it is. You add another quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. This quarterback play in this AFC side is is outrageous. It's going to be something to see week in and week out. the The question that I'm going to have for this Buffalo team is their willingness to run the football. Mm. Are they willing to go and run the ball and not run the ball with your quarterback? I mean, you really hand the ball off to a guy behind you whose (laughs) tag says RB on on the roster. Are you willing to hand the ball off to him? I think they did a really good job. They went out and got Dalton Kincaid in the first round, a tight end from Utah, who Mm. if you watched that USC-Utah game, Everyone was so high was watching Caleb Williams. This this damn tight end from Utah was just I'm like, oh, he's really good. And, he's and an we, actual tight end too. He's an actual tight yeah. end. And and you heard so much about the tight ends from from Georgia and Brock Bowers in Washington, but this guy from Utah was a difference maker. And so them going out and getting him with a first round pick was was intriguing to me because it just gives an offense that was already explosive with Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs more weaponry, more more people to get the ball to. Now, are they willing to run the football? Mm-hmm. Because if you are, you're in Buffalo, cold weather city. I've said this time and time again. I played in Pittsburgh. The recipe to success, to winning a championship, especially in the playoffs, run the ball, play defense. Yep. You have to be able to do that. And if this Buffalo teams decide to do that, if they decide to make that 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 happen, I think it's going to be important. Another thing to, to keep in mind on the defensive side, Leslie Frazier is no longer their D.C. Now, how do they look defensively? Because they, they, they are a team defensively that I really like, and I, I think they have capability to be really good, but it's going to be important to see. You, you talked about adding Leonard Floyd, uh, Tredavious White being healthy all season long is going to be important. They lost. They had some safety injuries with Poyer and Hyde last year. Are they going to be healthy, and what do they look like on the defensive end without Leslie Frazier as they as their D coordinator? Is Sean McDermott taking over? Because I don't think they filled I, that. I, I, don't I don't think, think they filled they've that hired spot. Anybody yet? Yeah, yeah. I, and I don't mind that. Yeah. I, you know, for me, I, I think that. And Kerry, you know this better than I do. Uh, you know, Mike Mike Tomlin was a defensive guy, but mm-hmm. he's he's a head coach. Right. He's not. So many times it's like, oh, he's really just an OC and he's acting like the right. head coach. With Sean McDermott, I understand if he doesn't if he doesn't want to oversee the defense, but I wonder. If it's a situation where he looks at it and says, "Okay, I'm a defensive-minded coach. Oh, yeah, we're we're at a crossroads here. Maybe I take over the defense and point this thing in the right direction." And if you have a good defense from the years past, it would make the most sense that the head coach does it because you probably are going to keep the terminology the same. Right. It makes it easier. It's an easier transition for your players as opposed to going out and hiring a new defensive coach who's going to bring in a new terminology for everyone to try to figure out. Those are things that when you are a player, it's all the same plays. That's the the, the crazy part about football is it's all the same plays. It's Nothing is different. The yeah. coverages aren't different. The runs aren't different. The blocking scheme isn't different. It's what you want to call it is going to be different. I may call it one thing, and you may call it something completely different, and it's the ability for a player to adjust to the new terminology and how quickly you can pick it up. 
And if it takes a while, especially with a defense season right around the corner, you may want to just stand pat with your defense and say, hey, we're going to keep everything the same. I'll call it. We'll run it this way. I'm comfortable and I'm familiar with it. And so now we have an opportunity to go out and be the best version of ourselves because I just talked about it. One thing you can't do with the defense in this AFC conference is struggle and have guys out of place because they thought this terminology was this and it meant something different. And now you got Patrick Mahomes or one of these AFC stars throwing for 450 yards and six touchdowns. Right, yeah. Bad day. Yeah, bad day indeed. <laughs> That's Kerry Davis. I'm Anthony Stoltz. You're listening to Gridiron Guys podcast. We appreciate appreciate everybody being patient with us as we, we do a podcast again. And, you know, a couple of people we have love reached y'all out. too. Yeah, yeah we, we know, do love y'all. Appreciate it. I, I've seen people out. Yes. They've said something to me. Yeah. Twitter, people have reached out. On the text line, they've yeah. asked, when are you guys doing another podcast? I'm sorry. Well, we appreciate it. I apologize. It. It's, it's all Carrie's fault. It's all fault. my fault. <laughs> Carrie's Blame a, me. Carrie's a, a, a very busy man, but no, we, we do. We appreciate the uh, the love and support. All right, let's go to – why don't we go to the Dolphins next? That's so where I was going. I you've got going. Miami. I'll give you the win total, and then we can kind of break things down. Um, and by the way, just going back to Buffalo real quick, uh-huh. you had mentioned play defense and, and run the ball. Yeah. And People hear that and they'll, they'll, they'll either do one of two things. They'll either say, yes, that's real football, and it is. Mm-hmm. Or they'll say that's not what maybe some of the advanced metrics say. Let me let me suggest something though. You want to go down this rabbit hole? Why can't it be both? <laughs> Why can't it be both? When you're in September and the weather's nicer, you're in October. The weather's not, let Josh let Josh Allen air it out. Yeah. But to your point, Kerry, when you get into Buffalo and it's freezing, you have the advantage, dude. You push you, people around. I, I will. Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl this past year. Isaiah Pacheco was a star for them late in the season. Now, yeah. it, I, I, I am. You got a guy that in Patrick Mahomes who's going to throw the ball. You got Travis Kelsey. He's going to catch passes. But when you need to get a first down, when you need to keep a defense in check so that they are not all back, you know, mm-hmm. and 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 not playing the pass, you're going to hand the ball off, and you got to have success doing it. Right. And that's that's the recipe for for winning championships and winning games. Oh, Andy, I think Andy Reid kind of found that out the hard way during the they pandemic tried. year. They they tried it. How many times do you remember that? And he he switched it halfway through. <laughs> halfway through the season, he yes. it, it, it's like okay, Andy. The the safe it, it's a two deep shell every we're, time. There's nobody in the box. The ball, Run the damn ball, man! Yeah, and then he, he finally kind of in the second half. Yes. I don't. Think, it's not that he doesn't know. Andy Reid's a genius. It's just, just are you committed? You yeah. Or do you want to do it? All right. So getting back to the Dolphins now. The Miami Dolphins win total. Uh, so I I took the over. Did you take the under on the I Bills? I took the over on the Bills. They on were the Bills. 10 okay. And a half. I yeah. took the over as well. Okay. Yep. Uh, Dolphins are sitting there at nine and a half. What do you think, Kerry? Nine and a half wins. I said it earlier, I think this division has three playoff teams. And so it's going to sound crazy because there's going to have to be some losses in there. They're probably going to split the division in in terms of how they win the games. I think the team that we're talking about next is going to be the doormat of the division, and they may have six losses. So that's where you get some of those divisional wins from. Um, I'm going to go over for them as well. Again, they have have a a star-studded roster, and – then you go out and get a, a a cornerback that you know is arguably one of the best cornerbacks of this uh, uh, of this time right yeah. now the, the the best quarterback in this era. in this era mm-hmm. uh, in, in Jalen Ramsey they are a team that is poised to be very good the question for them it always goes back to the quarterback and what did we see from Tua last year when he was healthy man love it I I whew. We didn't we we didn't know what we were going to get from Tua Tagovailoa. We had no clue. But healthy Tua was amazing. Unhealthy Tua, head banging the carpet Tua, yeah. head hitting the carpet and saying, "Oh, it's a back injury Tua," which anybody that got eyes know that 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 was a damn concussion, fool. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. That was a dumb dumb idea to throw him back out there. Yeah. If he's healthy, I love what this team can do. Yeah. If he's not, whew, it could be really rough for them. And it, it all boils down to his health. Yeah, no, you're Kerry, you, you nailed it. You're absolutely right. So are you going with the health? Are you good? That's the question. Are you going with the health? Are you going with the – and we'll just call it, it – not like we're rooting for a player to get hurt. No, 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 but never. But we're, we're kind of weaving the betting angle in here, right? Yes. So are you banking on – 
nine and a half being too big of a number because you're factoring in the health of Tua. I'm gonna I'm going I'm going to assume that you have a healthy Tua the entire season, and I'm saying that they win more than nine and a half games, ten ten plus games. And I don't know. I, I'm not a mathematician. I hate numbers, really. So I don't know how <laughs> how all three of these teams are going to get over ten wins. I don't know if the numbers match up for them to be able to do that with the divisional games. But if it does, I'm going to say all three of them are over ten. And I think the Miami Dolphins are are one of those teams again. When you add Jalen Ramsey, when you add the, the the pieces that they have, and then they're talking about Al adding Dalvin Cook, we know that that. You know, Mike McDaniels and the way he runs the football coming over from San Francisco, mm-hmm. the way they want to run the football. They have San Francisco might have four or five running backs running yep. the football. They don't give a damn. Hey, your turn. Hey, your turn. Absolutely. They, they got Christian McCaffrey. Okay, we're going to give him 25 Get carries. The, the rest of you guys, man, we figured <laughs> out. But when they had uh, Tevin, Tevin, uh, Tevin Coleman, I want to yeah. call him Tevin Campbell. Mm-hmm. That's a singer. Tevin Coleman, <laughs> they were going to run the football and they didn't care who was getting it. And so, if they were to add Dalvin Cook, I think they would be more committed to running the football. And, and, and Anthony, when you run the football, you know what that opens up? The passing game. Play action pass. <laughs> and Which you, is Mike McDaniel. If I got a safety looking in the backfield and I got Tyreek or Jalen Waddle. You've already lost. All right. It, 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 strike up the band. Yeah. It's, it's it, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I. I'm going to side with the talent here, and uh-huh. then we'll see we'll see what happens with with the the injury. But this is a loaded roster. You know what I see, Kerry, when I'm looking at this roster, I see the rookies are third. Most of the rookies are third and four stringers. Mm-hmm. That's how you know you got a great you got a great roster, yeah. and you've you added depth in the draft as opposed to we absolutely need this. Right. This has got to be the savior. Right. The draft is supposed to be something that you supplement your right. roster. It's and really it's your it's your foundation is what the NFL draft is. Uh, but when I look at this this roster for the Dolphins. I think they've addressed all weaknesses, all holes. Bradley Chubb, adding him at the deadline last year, was was critical. Can he stay healthy? Can he be effective? But you mentioned Jalen Ramsey. They acquired him from the Rams for basically nothing. Uh, I, th- I think I think that I, I I got a phone call and they're like, hey, uh, can you can you send over a, a box of Diet Coke <laughs> to the Rams? And then we're gonna get this to deal. Dump salary at yeah, that point, right? <laughs> that's exactly what they did. Tyree Kill's got to keep his, you know, he's got to stay out of trouble though. I mean, yeah. that this is a situation with Tyree Kill where dating back to his years of college is a reason why Tyreek Hill is talented as, as he is slipped to the middle rounds where Kansas City finally scooped him up so he's he's got to play he's got to be unselfish he's got to think about the team stay out of trouble and so the Dolphins can accomplish something but Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill offer the best one one of the best one two punches in football I agree with you if they had Dalvin Cook that's just a cherry on top but it does come back to Tua and his health oh, so we'll it, it see. does and, and they but I'm gonna take out, the over to and they went out and grabbed uh Mike White from the team we spoke about earlier, yeah, the who, Jets. Yeah, we had a pretty good. He had a pretty good season, and and the the team was wearing Mike White jerseys, obviously, Mike, Mike White shirts for him because they didn't want the other guy playing. Obviously, he's a leader too. He, he he is, and so if things don't go well and Tua does get banged up again, as a former player, Anthony, I, I couldn't tell you how many concussions I've seen and I've had. I, yeah. I've I'm, you literally can't. Yeah, you don't know. I, I literally yeah. can't tell you how many people I've seen concussed. When I saw him get up and do the stumble, Mm. he's got a concussion. What the hell are y'all looking at? It's a back injury. You're lying. (laughs) I don't give a damn what you said. And why? And and why? And then you go out a few weeks later or, or the next week, and now you see his fingers curled up. It was a short and, and week, I think, too, it, wasn't yeah, it, Gary? it was a Thursday night game. It was a Thursday night game against Baltimore. I just remember him I getting that helmet banged. It was against uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, thank him you. Helmet, his helmet getting banged against that turf. And you're like, yeah, this is what we all knew. Yeah. So as a as a former player, I hope he's protected well enough. I hope that he is uh, has done all of the things he needs to do to make sure that his brain is in the right place. Because one more of those, you, you don't know how it could turn out. Yeah. But – if he is healthy, this football team is going to be really good. All right, the last team that we're going to talk about in the AFC East would be the Patriots, and we've kind of alluded to it. At least Gary has about where you know his feelings on it. Yeah. The total is seven and a half. Yeah, I'll go under. Take the under on that yeah. one. I, I would like to know. I mean, I, I'm not a. I, I don't have the stats right in front of me, but Bill Belichick without Tom Brady as his quarterback, they kind of mediocre. Which is kind of crazy, right? Because he's so yeah. they they won eight games last year. We think of the Patriots last year as an absolute disaster. Yeah. They finished ahead of the Jets, who everybody loved. Yeah. They they won eight games last year. In 2021, they won 10 games. And that was when Mac Jones 
he was a rookie. Yeah. And the 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 ending wasn't good. I mean, they they got crushed by right. I think Buffalo in the playoffs. And then in 2020, they they won seven games, and that was the the pandemic year where they had like Cam Newton, and it was just yeah. it was that was the first year off Tom Brady. So they've won at least seven games, Kerry. Yeah, but it's not it's not the 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 Patriots that we are accustomed to seeing. Oh, it's no. not the you know dominant divisional champions play good defense you know find receivers off the wherever the hell you find them from other than Randy Moss and go out and make plays and again it starts at the quarterback position we were talking a lot about this AFC and all of the quarterbacks you got a uh, 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 just a bunch of guys that are that are top tier top five top ten quarterbacks in that in that conference and Mac Jones isn't one of those guys. And I know there's been talks of them potentially signing DeAndre Hopkins, um, mm-hmm. which would help. They got Juju Smith-Schuster. That that can help. But if your quarterback is not playing up to the level that you need him to play up to, you're not going to have success in this league. And and right now, Mac Jones is 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 right there in that in that mindset. And there was a there was a a time during the season where you know Bailey Zappi was hell, uh, hell who Mac who. You know, Mac got hurt, and they were Bailey. Yeah, weird. I think I think they thought it was Mac Jones. He basically looked, it's the same guy. He, but but he he was but he winning. was actually connecting on the deep passes and doing things better than what Mac was doing at one point. And there was conversation that maybe Bailey Zappi might be the starting quarterback going forward. Yeah. So right now, I think there is some pressure on Mac Jones to perform well. Again, this team. Can you tell me a receiver on their roster, off the top of your head? I'm looking uh, at the roster and I'm Devontae like, Parker uh, okay. they, they just signed, they just they resigned just signed him. him. Yeah. yeah. Uh the kid last year, Thompson. Sorry, the, the Tyquan last, Thornton. Tyquan Thornton. I was gonna okay. say started with a T, so I didn't get and that Kendrick one. Kendrick Bourne. Kendrick Bourne from the 49ers yeah. from a couple they, they of years just, ago. They, yeah. No, it, I mean it, your it, your point is well made anyways. Basically, yeah. when you're talking about Stefan Diggs and you're talking about Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle and, and and these Garrett guys, Wilson. Garrett Wilson and those guys, eh, it's a little bit different in this in in this for this team. And so now yeah. you're trying to figure out are they able to have success on the offensive side, offensively. Ramondre Stevenson, I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. The running back. I I red gloves and all. I love watching him play football. He's great. Hard nose, catches the ball, blocks, does all the things you want from a young running back. I really like him. Um, but I don't know if they have enough to be successful in this division specifically. I want to take the over. I want to take the over because it, it again they've. We've thought about the Patriots in two of the last three years like disasters. Well, they won seven games and eight games. Yeah. The year that they went to the playoffs, they won 10. So I want to take the over. But, Karen, I'm looking at the schedule. I know it's dangerous to play the schedule game. I can't find eight wins. They they, they open against Philadelphia. That's a loss. You've got Miami and loss. New York. Loss. You're in Dallas. You might be able to win that one. I don't know what that You're is home against the Saints. And the, I think the Saints, as we've talked about, loss. I think the Saints are going to be good yeah. this year. You know, maybe maybe you win in Vegas uh, to a, gonna, avenge what happened gonna, last you're year. You're going to win that game because you don't know if uh, – uh, Jimmy G is even capable. You know what True. the hell is going on out there. So, but you remember speaking of the receiver, who is who is the one that threw threw the the pass back? Oh, that was <laughs> Ramondre Stevenson threw it back to him, and, and then he yes. threw it back. Who's I, the I, I receiver? That, I think it was Ramondre Stevenson that started that. He started, yeah, that he debacle. definitely started. It's it. his fault. We, we're gonna blame him. He ran to, for about twelve yards, and then it's like, hey, it's man, like they forgot that the game was tied. Yeah. Or the, oh, they clearly did. <laughs> They're trying to make something happen on the on the last the last second. Who was the receiver? I can't remember. He signed, who it was. He signed with. Um, oh man, come on, who Carrie. Was it? Hold on, I'm I'm gonna find it. Yeah, it, it was it was yeah it, that that was a terrible. I can see his. Play. I can see his face right now. Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers. Yeah, thank it was you. Jacoby Myers. Yeah. He, <laughs> he, I gotta give it to him. He threw a perfect pass to Chandler Jones. Not, a not, perfect pass. <laughs> how you want to play the game. It was, he hit him in stride. Uh, Mac <laughs> Jones tried to grab an ankle and it was Everybody over. Everybody's like, what in the hell oh, is going man. on here? Anyways, thank you. It was, yeah, uh, Jacoby Myers. All right, so, yeah, again, we don't have to go through the whole schedule. I can't find eight wins. So, I'm going to take the under the, on the Patriots as well. So, uh, to recap here, Patriots, Carrie and I both agree. We both have the under on the Patriots. We both have the over 9.5 with the Dolphins. We both have the over 10.5 with the Bills. And we're split 
when it comes to the Jets. Kerry took the over yes. nine and a half. I took the under nine and a half. Yes. Just I think I think the Jets fall just short. I've got I've got a thing with uh, teams that are that are really hyped. I just I I, I tend to I, I tend to go against I them. I think the Jets are going to be really good. They should yeah, be. They should be. But we'll see what happens. All right. Switching over now to the NFC East. Okay. Why don't we start off with Washington? We'll start at, we'll start there and then we'll go up to the uh defending conference title winners. Washington has got six and a half as a total. That's pretty low. That's but probably right on spot spot you, on. You know why it's low. They're gonna start Thanks. Sam Howell. I think. Really they've got Terry McLaurin and Kurt, you know, Curtis Samuel, and that's that's about it. I Brian like, Robinson is a pretty good back. Yeah, I, I like what uh, Jahan Dotson did in his in his appearances last year. That's he, true. he showed some flashes of being a a really good receiver. The quarterback position is is questionable. They they didn't feel the need to go anywhere or move up or or make any draft picks for for a quarterback. They felt like they had their guy in uh in Howell, and and only time will tell because I I don't. I don't know. I don't think that he is the nobody, guy. For yeah, them. nobody knows. Yeah, I don't think he is, and so we'll see if he's able to have any success. They brought in Jacoby Brissett, which you know that's just a guy to make sure that if things do fall yeah. to the wayside, they got at least a quarterback. He can on finish the, the year. There right. you go. Their defensive line, though, Anthony is is one of the best defensive lines in the league. It should be. It, it, it to me, it is. I mean, now. Do you get the Chase Young that we thought there we, we go. were going to get from his rookie year before he got injured? Thank Therein you. lies the question. He's missed a lot of time in that position because of his knee injury. And and but Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne up the middle every day. So they sign me up. Give mm. me two of those. Give me two of them. I, I'll take them because <laughs> and then and then Montez Sweat off the edge. I like him as well. It's just a. It's just very. It's going to be interesting to see how well. They can hold up defensively because, you know, they they got a couple of rookies starting in the in the defensive backfield as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how well they can hold up. I just don't think this team has enough on the offensive side. And and what happens when you're, you know, not winning games or down? You got to throw the football. Teams get to pin their ears back and come after you as a as a quarterback. I think it's going to be a long season. For old, uh, for old uh, River Riverboat Ron. Yeah, I wonder if he makes it too by the end of the year. I mean, he may make it to the end of the year, but I I wonder if he's if if he winds up being a Black Monday casualty. Yeah, it's possible. You got Eric Bieniemy as the OC his first time okay, leaving go. and going into a new a new a new place. So sure. we'll see how well this offense looks. <laughs> Calm down, because it's not going to look like what it looked like in 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 KC over mm-hmm. the last five six years. It's going to be personnel's a little different. <laughs> Especially at the quarterback position, a little different. Yeah, I would start say so. there, but yeah, <laughs> seven and a half. You said, yeah, I'm going under. No, six and a half. Actually, yeah, I'm going under. Yeah, I wouldn't go under if it was three and a half, but I, you would have to pull my arm. <laughs> so you think one of the worst in the league? I'm gonna say five wins for this team. You know, four to five wins. I'm gonna take, and the that's un- without even looking at the schedule. I'm gonna take the under two, Kerry. I I think the defensive line should be one of the best. I, I think it does depend a lot on Chase Young and whether or not, like you said, we're gonna get it the the Chase Young that showed up a couple of years ago. But they've got two young guys that they're projected to start in their secondary two corners. The first first two. Uh, picks in this year's draft, Forbes and Martin. So they're gonna they're, gonna, they're probably gonna have some secondary issues. Uh, we'll, we'll see, but I don't I don't think I don't think Washington's gonna is going to uh, surprise anybody this year. Why don't we go to the New York Giants, who of course surprised everybody last year by making a run? Brian Dable did a remarkable job in his first year. They brought back. Daniel Jones, that was the big decision there. Forty million a year. Yeah, and then good Sa- luck, Saquon Barkley. <laughs> I don't think he's going to hold out. I think I think he'll eventually sign the franchise tag and, and go from there. But when you look at this Giants team, their their twin total is only seven and a half. I think I think odds makers are baiting you to take the over based on what the Giants did a year ago. I think this is a team that that steps back. They weren't that good last year. Right. And now Brian Dable's got to kind of convince his team that we're still building. Right. So I, I think it was one of those years last year where, again, they, start, they, they snuck up on everybody. They played that style of football that was don't beat yourself. And in the fourth quarter, when the game's close, who knows? And they won a lot of close games in the fourth quarter. 
games that could have went either way. Again, taking nothing away from Daniel Jones, who ran well last year, and Saquon Barkley, who's finally stayed healthy. The receivers that stepped up because they didn't have much. Again, great job by the coaching staff. I think that this is a year they step back, though. Um, yeah, I, the, you said Saquon Barkley. You think he's going to sign that that franchise tag? I do. At, at ten million dollars a year for that position, I wouldn't. I mean, I, I that sounds crazy, right? But that position, you just—he's already dealt with an injury in his career. He's already missed time. And so I understand the Giants' perspective for why they don't want to give him that long-term deal because you just don't know, right? But for him, business savvy, business sense, it's going to tell him, hey, yeah, I've already had an injury. This could be a one-and-done type of deal if I get injured again. I'm going to hold out as long as I can. And if this team stinks, then they'll realize how valuable I am. The the, the running back market, the value for the running backs has, has dropped drastically here in the last – what three four five six years and so now people don't feel that there's a need I mean you look at the Dallas Cowboys who we're going to talk about shortly they got rid of Ezekiel Elliott because they got Tony Pollard what do we need two of you for if I'm Saquon I'm gonna I'm gonna take my time with this this decision they need him to be their their bell cow he's gonna have to carry the football they don't have anybody to throw the football to they drafted Jalen Hyatt out of out of Tennessee who I think is going to be really good for them that was a position of need for this, uh, for this New York Giants team, but when you're looking at this roster, and then you look at the quarterback position, that's not something that you that that strikes fear no. in you as an opponent. You want Daniel Jones to do do what? He's gonna beat me. <laughs> okay, good luck. Right. We'll, we'll and and you're telling me Saquon is gonna hold out? <laughs> yeah, all right, we'll we'll have eight. <laughs> we'll have we'll have six in the box, and you figure it out. And so. I don't know that they can. And so that, that win total of seven and a half, I'm definitely on the underside as well. All right, so we're we're in lockstep here in the, the first two teams in the NFC East. We've got two more to get to here on our Gridiron podcast, uh, the Gridiron Guys podcast. Dallas Cowboys are nine and a half. Nine and a half for the Dallas Cowboys. I think that this might be one of the more intriguing teams in the NFC. The, granted, the NFC is weak mm-hmm. overall. I know what the Eagles are. I know what some of the other teams are in the NFC. I don't necessarily know what Dallas is. Is Tony Pollard going to be healthy? Because Tony Pollard's the best player. Right. You can talk, you know, feel free to talk to me about Dak or, uh, you know, CeeDee Lamb. Certainly some of the players that they have on defense with Travion Diggs and some of those guys. Tony Pollard's the best player. When Tony Pollard went out last year in the playoffs, Dallas was done. I didn't think that they were going to beat San Francisco anyways. I knew I knew as soon as Pollard got injured, that was it. And there was no other counter when it came to Dallas's approach. And now you're going to bring in Brian Schottenheimer, who we know from our days covering the Rams, is somebody that is kind of rinse and repeat with his offense. However, I wonder if Mike McCarthy, who he, should be calling the plays. I think he will be. I think he will be, too. Yeah, he just gave old Shotty the, the title. The title. Yeah. I Mike, we're gonna see what Mike McCarthy learned over the last couple of years. Cause remember he took the he took the year off to say, I need to refresh my offense. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago that Mike McCarthy ran a a very good offense, a Super Bowl winning offense. Mm-hmm. It wasn't all just Aaron Rodgers. It was the combination of the two, because I thought McCarthy got the best out of Aaron Rodgers, too. But Mike McCarthy has basically been a scarecrow over the last three years now he's looked lost totally like the 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 elements of football and and head coaching he's looked lost at times when to call a timeout when not to call one when to challenge when not right like the 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 parts that make you a head coach Mm -hmm. he has looked lost at at times and that's that's got to be more troubling than the x's and o's parts of it well i wonder too carrie if, if it's a situation where he he knows he's not he's not in control. He's not in control of his roster. That's the front office with led by Jerry Jones. Mm-hmm. He, last year he wasn't in control. Last two years he wasn't in control of his own offense. Right. That that uh, was was Kellen Moore, right. who is now in San Diego. Ooh, sorry, Los L.A. Yep. Yeah, with the uh, Chargers. Mm-hmm. So now we're going to see whatever Mike McCarthy's version of his his offense is. We're finally going to see it. I want to believe in Dallas. I like the defense. I I like the skill positions. Can they protect Dak? And can Mike McCarthy work with Dak to get the most out of him? I say he does, and I say they get at least 10 wins. I'm going to say that if they, with Mike McCarthy potentially taking over this offense, the first thing he needs to do, the very first thing when they go over installing and, and figuring out 
um, you know, who's going to do what, what routes we're going to run, what run plays we're going to run, what type of protection we're going to have. He has to teach Dak which color jerseys we're wearing today <laughs> because Dak turns the damn ball over too much. 15 interceptions. And they wear white Top all the time. So you hey, we're wearing white today. <laughs> Throw it to the white jerseys, please and thank you. Mm-hmm. 15 interceptions last year, tops in the league, and he missed games. Yeah. That is troubling for a franchise that you expected to, to have a great season last year and you kind of expect them to do the same this year. If Dak turns the ball over at the rate that he did last year, they're going to – you can you can cancel Christmas, cancel Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving game. Don't worry about it. We're not going to – nobody's going to – it doesn't matter. It's going to be a long season, another long season for Cowboys fans if Dak Prescott does not know which team to throw the football to because he did it a lot last year, throwing it to the opposing team. Yeah, you can't lose the game before we have an opportunity to yes. win it. All right, we'll wrap it up here with the defending NFC champion Eagles. The over is – or the uh, total. Did I give you an under on that? Uh, uh, you said ten, nine and a half? Nine and a half. I'm going under. I'm going nine. Did I say nine and a half or ten and a half? Nine and a half. If it's ten and a half, definitely under. I think it was nine and a half. Nine and a half. Yeah, ooh, we'll go under. I'm going to go the over on that one. All right, the Eagles, the Eagles win total is 11 and a half, and they're actually shading to the under, which means – they're, they're going to give you more money if you win and you take the over. At 11 and a half, I know they're going to play a first-place schedule. That that certainly changes for, mm-hmm. for the Eagles. But I, I still – I don't think last season was a fluke. The defense, you brought back most of those guys, plus you added Jalen Carter. You, your, your offense is all intact again. You lost – Miles Sanders, but you brought you you made the acquisition, the draft, the acquisition for DeAndre Swift. Plus, mm-hmm. you still have Kenneth Gainwell, and you still have Boston Scott. You added Rashad Penn. Like you have running backs, yeah. especially for that system. Jalen Hurts, he's he got paid. He's a he's he's a workaholic. He's uh you know he's a winner. He won at college. He yeah. won. He's won thus far at the the NFL. Offensive line is intact, and you got you got the two studs outside. I. I I think the Eagles get at least 12 wins. I'm going to take the over. I'm going to take the over as well. Um, you know, you got the first-round pick in Jalen Carter, who was a surprise that he he fell to them. I mean, despite all of the off-the-field stuff that he had going on, the fact that he fell to them was uh, outstanding for them. You got another – they they become Georgia uh, uh, Northeast. Big time. <laughs> a little bit with all the Georgia draft picks. They got Nolan Smith as well. This is a team, when I'm looking at, at this roster – I mean, what A.J. Brown did in his first year over there was amazing. Devontae Smith, those two, 1A, 1B, how can you not love it? And then you talked about the running game. This offensive line is probably one of the best offensive lines in the league in in pass protection and run blocking. They are guys that are going to do their job to the best of their ability and more than more times than not, better than everyone uh, that they're facing. And and one thing that, that you know, when you're, when you're a coach – you learn in practice. Some days you have it, – it's frustrating, right, because some days the defense wins and some days the offense wins. I bet those practices are amazing with that offensive line and defensive line because there's two of the best at their respective positions in the league. And so when you're good on good, when you get to Sunday, I don't got to block Brandon Graham. <laughs> Sign right. me up. <laughs> I don't got to rush against Jordan Mileta. <laughs> Please, thank you. Right. you you're, you're excited about that because you know the guys that you're facing in practice are some of the best in the league. And when you get to Sunday, Monday, Thursday night, this is going to be much easier than what I face every single day. And that's really what this Eagles team is. They are star-studded throughout. They draft well. They've gone out. They've lost people, but they've gained more. And so they are poised to be, I think, repeat NFC champions and heading to the Super Bowl again. They should be favored. They are favored. Uh, I'm with you. So I think we agreed on all of them except for the Cowboys, right? We took I we, took the under, yeah. We both took the under with the Giants. We both took yep. the under with the Commanders. Yep. We both took the over with the Eagles. The one that we split on was the Dallas Cowboys. I took the over on the Cowboys. Kerry took the under. Uh, that'll do it for the Gridiron Guys podcast. Kerry, it's good to do this again, man. Yeah, it feels good, man. Kerry Let me get reached, the juices flowing. Kerry reached out the other day, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, we're doing this podcast again. Yeah, so we're no, we we're we had no plans to uh, take take a, a long break, but Kerry's got a lot going on. I so hopefully, apologize. hopefully with um, Kerry's schedule and my schedule, we can get this thing going again. And now it's a it is a dead time. You typically there's really no dead time in the NFL, right. but if there is one, it's it's between now and when training camps start up yes. in a couple of weeks. So. 
Kerry Davis, Super Bowl champion. I'm Anthony Stalter. We appreciate everybody listening to the Gridiron Guys podcast. If we don't see you next week, we'll hopefully only do, you know, one we or two weeks. We won't leave you out there too yeah, long. Yeah. We see, we have and if one... we do, just blame me. <laughs> Kerry, I can't let you take it all, Kerry. I, it's, it's, it's a great – we win and lose it as a team. But we do have the – AFC West and the NFC West, yep. and that'll put a that'll put a um, a bow on our divisional looks, and yep. then then it's all about training camp and preseason. Before you know it, here we got week one. Football, yes, yes. For Kerry Davis, I'm Anthony Salter. We'll see you next time on the Gridiron Gridiron Guys podcast. Thanks for listening to the Gridiron Guys podcast with Super Bowl champion Kerry Davis and Anthony Stalter. Driven by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Check out the Gridiron Guys podcast page at 101ESPN.com.